What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. And today we are taking a look at the Star Wars The Black Series Bad Batch Deluxe Wrecker figure. I will say I have had this figure in my possession for at least like two months. Um, I ended up pre-ordering him through a local uh, seller. But he still hasn't got it in yet. Or he was short-shipped. It's all good. I ended up finding him at Walmart. So that's all right. Um, yeah, had him for a while. Uh, decided to finally give him a give him a review, open him up because I do think he is one of the cooler, funnier characters in the Bad Batch. Um, yeah, uh, all the new Star Wars coming out. It just really in the mood to start reviewing some more Star Wars figures, and hopefully we get that archive wave and that uh, tech wave. And uh, I guess there's another wave too, right? I think there's another wave that I'm not thinking of. Oh, the Rogue One wave. That should be dropping any day now. I've, actually, they've been starting to show up at the Toys R Us's here in Canada. So I have those pre-ordered through GameStop. Hopefully we get those soon. But uh, yeah, enough talking. Uh, let's actually read a little quick bio here. Uh, the bo boisterous bruiser of the Bad Batch. Wrecker has brute strength that makes him... Capable of lifting a clone gunship without any help. His muscle and size are matched only by his temper and an equally pronounced sense of humor. See, there you go. So he is pretty funny. It even says on the back of the box. But yeah, there's the box there. Side art. Uh, let's open him up. All right, guys. And here he is out of his little plastic prison. And he is a bigger figure. I do get why they made this guy a deluxe. But... I do think maybe he should have came with one more thing um, for his accessories, but uh, I don't know what, really. I mean, it's really another weapon or something. But, uh, yeah, not a bad-looking figure out of the box. Um, let's take a quick look at what he comes with, and then we'll uh, take a closer look at Rekka. All right, so, yeah, he does come with four accessories. He does come with his awesome-looking helmet. The paint apps are pretty good on this, I will say. They look good. Maybe a little bit of white going into the gray there, but not a huge deal breaker. Awesome looking helmet. We do get his backpack. It ports just in the back of his back there. I'll show you guys in a minute. But that's cool. Cool backpack. Um, it has these uh, clamp things on the bottom too. I think uh, the Hunter figure also has those. Uh, I don't know if they do anything or hold anything, but not bad. Has the logo there. Pretty cool. And then he comes with this awesome looking blade. Reminds me of a Rambo's knife, Rambo knife or something. Like a Rambo knife from back in the day. Uh, very cool. Very cool blade. Nice and shiny look to it. Really good shine to it, actually. Nice and shiny. Very nice. And then he also comes with his little uh, blaster here. I don't know what kind of gun this is, but I'm pretty sure this is the gun he uses most in the show. I think this is the same gun that came with Hunter as well. But, uh, yeah. Cool looking pistol, or gun. I don't know if it's a pistol. Probably not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Not bad, not bad. There's a little bit of extra paint hanging off the side of the gun there. I don't know if you guys can see that. That can come off easily, probably. But, yeah. Not bad for accessories. I do think he should have came with probably one more weapon. Maybe like a bigger rifle. I um, can't remember off the top of my head if he actually uses a big rifle on the show or not. But I just think, you know, if he's a deluxe, throw as many accessories as you can fit in there. And in the bubble, I think they could have fit maybe one more decently sized weapon for this big boy. But uh, there's the accessories. Let's uh, take a closer look at the figure. So here he is with all his accessories. Let's try uh, porting all these things on here. We'll start off with the backpack. Just ports in his back there. Very simple. And it's on. Awesome. And he does have this long uh, holder on his leg for his blade, which is really cool too. So that slides in like that perfectly. Look at that. Fits perfect. Let's get him holding this gun. It holds the gun very well in his right hand there and he does have a slightly opened hand on his left hand so he can grip this bottom part of the gun but I don't know if we're gonna get him to 
have a nice grip on it. Maybe not actually. <laughs> not as good as I thought, but he can still probably hold it. He might just have to warm his fingers up a bit or bend the plastic a little more. But uh, there's him holding the gun. And let's see him with the helmet on. Boom. And there it is. Rekka with his awesome looking helmet on. Um, the paint apps are awesome on this figure, I will say. This, like the shiny silver parts where like he's been battle damaged and stuff. Not so much going on on the back, unfortunately. It's all kind of plain. Like you can see here, there's some scratches and stuff on his armor. They probably could have highlighted that with some silver to make it look more battle damaged like they did here. But they just skipped it, I guess. Which I'm not too like mad about because, I mean, really... Unless you're like po taking figure photography super serious and you want to take more pictures of their back and you want that kind of effect, that's cool. But for me, he's probably going to be on the shelf facing forward like this. So not a huge game breaker for me. But articulation wise, we'll uh, we'll start looking over his articulation. Oh, actually, before we do that, I do want to say that his shoulder pieces are very pliable rubber too. And even this chest piece right here is really like soft rubber. So something something uh, to keep in mind there so you can probably get some good poses uh, let's take his gun off his hand here and we're gonna take his backpack off too let's go into his articulation right, guys so we're gonna start with the arms arms can go up but they do get hindered by the uh, shoulder strap there um, they can go wide that much little stiff but that rubber on the shoulder allows you to uh, pull them all the way back so that's cool um, it looks like he's doing Jericho's pose right now <laughs> but uh, yeah not bad arm articulation some very good articulation in the elbows there gotta love the elbow articulation that's good and I like how you can still see like the texture of the of the clothing and the joint there so that's cool I like how Hasbro does that it's really cool. Um, let's go into his waist or ab crunch. He does have a good ab crunch. Not too bad, not too bad. He can swivel too, so that's good. And he clicks every time he does. Very nice. As you can see, the helmet isn't really on 100% or it's just not that big for him. Maybe you have to slightly adjust the, the helmet there still kind of see his skin underneath but not a not a huge deal uh, for legs they move very well you can kick pretty forward pretty high um, he doesn't really he can't kick his own butt like some figures well, that's okay decent articulation in the knees uh, let's see if we can get him in the classic GW pose and oh yeah, look at that. That's a great pose. Very, very good ankle pivot there. Loving it. His ankles move up and down, side to side. Great pivot. And yeah, great articulation for a decent, decently sized figure, I would say. All right, guys, and here he is next to the other Bad Batch figures that I own. Um, I did skip on Admiral Rampart. Um, he was $40 here at Walmart, and I just couldn't justify paying $40 for a figure that of a character I don't really care about. Like, we haven't really seen enough of Rampart yet. Well, for me anyways. Um, he pretty much is just a Tarkin body mold with a different head, and he comes with the mouse droid. I guess the mouse droid's pretty cool, but I did pass on that figure. But looking at Wrecker here beside the other Bad Batch figures here, I know this isn't really a Bad Batch figure, uh, member, but he is part of the Bad Batch line. Uh, but yeah, he looks great. He looks really great beside them. I totally can see why they made him a deluxe now, putting him next to these other two uh, figures here. He is a lot bigger than them. His arms are bigger, his legs are bigger, his chest's bigger, everything's bigger. Um, but yeah, I do, I do not have the Imperial Crosshair either. That was another one I skipped. Um, and I'm kind of happy I did because that was another one that was $40 and it was just pretty much this figure just all in black Maybe a little differences here and there, but 
I just didn't. I just. I'm trying not to buy multiple figures of the same character for Star Wars. Only like, I don't know, top tier characters get that treatment for me, like Luke and maybe Vader and stuff. But Bad Batch, I do enjoy the show, but it just hasn't grasped, hasn't grabbed me like Clone Wars has, you know. But it's still a great show. Um, looking forward to season two, and I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna end the review there, guys. I don't really have much more to say for this guy. Um, stay tuned for more Marvel Legend reviews coming this week. Um, I'm going to be reviewing the Spider-Man No Way Home figures. I do have at least four or five out of the, the seven or six that's in the set. And I also do have that new Toys R Us slash Target exclusive uh, Vulture Build-A-Figure that they re-released. So I do want to re review that figure as well. I might actually do that one first and then do the, the No Way Home figures after that. But if you guys enjoyed this little quick review here of this uh, awesome record figure, smash that like, hit subscribe. We've got more toy reviews coming. And yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one.